In this video, we will look at how to interpret the LEDs on 1130AG lightweight access point. LEDs on an access point give valuable information for troubleshooting purposes and to understand the process that happens inside the lightweight access point. The 1130AG lightweight access point has three LEDs. The status LED on the top of the unit, the radio and event LED in the cable bay area. Let's first look at the status LED. Under normal circumstances, as soon as the lightweight access point registers to the wireless LAN controller, the status LED will indicate light green. This means the LAP is operating as expected and it has no wireless clients connected to it. So what happens when a wireless client is associated to a lightweight access point? The status switches from light green to light blue, indicating again normal operation but this time with associated wireless clients. Another very frequent event that happens in a Cisco Unified Wireless Environment is a lightweight access point downloading images from the controller. A lightweight access point will download an image from the controller if it is the first time it registers with the controller or if the image on the access point is different from that of the controller. When this happens, the status LED blinks dark blue. This continues till the image download is completed. Till now, we have seen what the different colors on the status LED indicate. Now let's look at the sequence of events that happen when a lightweight access point registers to a wireless LAN controller and how the status LED reacts to the different events. In our example, we have a wireless LAN controller configured and ready to accept registration request from the access point. We will look at the registration process from the perspective of the access point. Here we also have the console output from the AP that shows the LAP registration process. As soon as the AP is powered up, the access point boot process begins. During the boot process, the status LED indicates dark green at the beginning and switches to white at the end of the boot process. Once the boot process completes, the access point enters into the LWAP discovery phase. This is where the access point applies the controller hunting algorithm to discover controllers. This phase is indicated on the status LED by an alternating dark green, amber and red. If the access point fails to discover a controller, then the status LED continues to flash these colors. In our example, the access point finds and joins the controller. As a next step, the access point downloads an image from the controller. As mentioned in one of the earlier slides, this status is indicated by a blinking dark blue on the status LED. Let's wait till the access point downloads the image from the controller. Once the image download is complete, the access point reboots and rediscovers the wireless LAN controller. As expected, as soon as the access point registers with the wireless LAN controller, the status LED turns light green, indicating normal operation of the access point. I hope this demo gives a clear picture in understanding the expected behavior of the status LED during the registration process. If the lightweight access point is experiencing bootloader errors or IOS errors, the status LED turns red. Another common problem seen is when a lab does not have a static IP address configured or does not receive an IP address from the DHCP server. This is indicated on the status LED with a flashing amber. And finally, there's a LED flash feature which can help in locating lightweight access points, especially in a huge wireless LAN setup. Let's assume we have a big wireless LAN setup with 500 plus access points and we would like to locate one particular access point. This feature, when enabled, flashes the status LED in dark green for a user-defined time. The command to do this is LED flash time in seconds from the CLI. Let's now look at the radio and Ethernet LEDs. You'll find them in the cable bay area of the lightweight access point. These LEDs are pretty straightforward. Blinking green on either of these LEDs indicate transmitting or receiving packets. Blinking green also indicates software upgrade. 
And if the access point experiences I.O. as a bootloader errors, you'll see an alternating amber, red and green on the radio and Ethernet LEDs. This table summarizes the points that we discussed on the radio and Ethernet LEDs. I hope this short video on interpreting LEDs on the 1130 AG lightweight access point was useful. There are a host of useful documents and discussions in the Cisco support community. I would suggest that you check them out too.